Today I'm going to reveal ancient Chinese techniques for painting Death Guard. Yo dog, Kenny Bichet here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, we're doing it again. 8th edition is here. Maybe you guys heard. We're going to be painting some of that sweet, sweet dark Imperium action. We're going to be painting the Lord of Contagion, the Nurgle Death Guard bad mofo in that box. Today we're going to be focusing on painting that iconic Death Guard white but with my style. Death Guard is one of my favorite armies of all time. Historically, I've always been in love with them. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth edition, always got Nurgle love. I used to always love that color scheme. I used to use bubonic brown and bleached bone from the old GW lineup. That was my style. It's sort of a Deathwing style of white. It's kind of a beige, bony white going into that off-white spectrum with some wash game. Sounds really easy because it is. This will be an ongoing series. We're gonna get the white on the model today. I'm gonna show you some easy techniques for making that white look great. We're gonna take it to the next level live on Twitch. Then we'll come back to YouTube, do another studio tutorial. Hopefully we'll be executing some amazing transitions, maybe with some greens, maybe with some pinks. See where I'm going. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on Patreon, Javier, Anthony, Ollie, my man James, Robert, Steven, and Laurel, thank you guys for coming through this week. I cannot do it without you. And of course, the longwar.net, the home of 8th edition battle reports and breaking news. Let's do this thing, guys. The new Death Guard, Lord of Contagion, that new 8th edition heat. As you can see, we broke them up into several pieces. We're going to be airbrushing that cape. We're going to be airbrushing that huge Nurgle bubble gut. But for now, we're going to be focusing on that iconic Death Guard White, and we're going to be leaning on Orange Rust and Weathered Wood from Secret Weapon Miniatures. So we're going to grab the old airbrush, some ancient Chinese technique here, Vallejo Flow Improver. We're going to throw it up in the pot, and we're just going to introduce some of that Orange Rust. This is going to be our base coat, so we can combo off of it to create some of those iconic whites. But we're going to keep our whites dirty, almost tan. Here's the Gangster Gumbo Backflow Technique. And now we're gonna lay it down over a nice gray primer, which is gonna help the color look vibrant. We're gonna cover every inch of the model. We're not gonna give a fuck. Even though that huge Nurgle gut's gonna be a different color, a fleshy pink, which is iconic for Nurgle, we don't care. Booyah. So it's nice and thin, several thin coats using a combination of air and paint. We're leaning on a lot of air. Help it dry fast. You can see it's very vibrant. This orange rust is fabulous. What we're going to do next is we're going to start airbrushing all the white elements on the pieces we left off because I do plan on painting that cape a bright green. It's going to be fucking a focal point of this model. So we do have to, however, get these armor elements to match up with the rest. So we got to paint them all at the same time, glue it together after we're done with the airbrush work, and then we're going to use some highlight technique to match it all up. Same deal with the Zax, even though the axe isn't that hard to paint when it's glued on the model. We wouldn't have access to his Nurgle plague flesh on his stomach. We're just conscious of every one of these nooks and crannies, guys. We're trying to get into all the tight spots, just covering everything up because it is a gray primer. And we're going to lean back on orange rust and weathered wood. And we're going to combine them together to create our highlight color. And you see we have a kind of a tannish color here. It's comboing off of that orange rust. Very smooth, very tight. We're keeping the paint real thin with a proper amount of flow improver so that we eliminate all speckling from the equation. We're going to start cheating it to that white spectrum. We're focusing on the flat regions, the top of the knee, the bottom of the greaves. I like to highlight from the bottom up on the feet and then I bring it from the top down to the knee. It's just my technique. Center of the chest. We're going to focus on his face, get his gets a little bit of kind of center face, blow it out. It's kind of my ritual. We're going to apply some of this to just basically every surface, but we're going to let some of the original orange rust still interact. This is going to help us look weathered, look old, look gritty. We did the same thing for the, the hands on the axe. We did it for the, the shoulder piece here. Very simple stuff. 
All right, now we're gonna introduce pure weathered wood, 100%. And this is almost like a Deathwing color scheme, guys. Weathered wood is a little brighter though. So we're gonna introduce this to the peaks of all these highlights, and this is gonna take it to that Death Guard white. But we're not gonna keep it clean and remotely. We're not doing white with some grime. We're like, this white is not white anymore. So we are focusing on this alternate color scheme. We're gonna introduce a lot of other fun colors. Like we're not gonna paint the trim metallic. We're gonna paint all the trim bright green. The cape will be amazing, a fabulously transitioned airbrush green. We're gonna introduce some pinks, some hyper purples. We're gonna definitely stay in our notor the notorious Nurgle color palette that we're known for, but we are gonna use some of those Death Guard colors that are iconic. So we're just reinforcing every highlight we just did. A little bit more weathered wood, a little bit of air, let it seal up, introduce a little bit more paint, let it seal up. That's kind of the technique, the air, 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 paint, paint, paint song. Here we go. Everything's looking nice and white, but it's obviously too clean, too transitioned. So right now we're going to introduce gloss varnish because we are going to wash this model. So a little Vallejo gloss varnish through the airbrush. We're going to put a solid coat down on this model. Two reasons. It's going to lock in the soft, pillowy, sensual airbrushing that we just did because it's very delicate. So that's step one. It's gonna protect our paint from our wash phase, but also it's gonna enhance our wash phase by repelling the wash in general. It's gonna help break up the surface tension. It's gonna be like water on glass. I love it. It also lets you be more rough when you're applying the wash, which I also like. So what we're doing here is we're getting the wash down on the model to a slight milky tone. We're not like letting it be super milky, but just a little bit of hint of milky translucence building up in some of the areas lets you know you've put enough on all right here's the three colors the trifecta mild brown dark tone flesh wash there's basically a reddish brown a brown brown and a black we mix them all together we're using a bit of acrylic medium to help break it up and mix it together and thin it down we're not using any water i find that water sometimes gets weird spotty drying so this helps it look its best you see it's being repelled by the gloss varnish it's helping it find its way into all the recesses while wicking away from the top areas. We are staining the white, but we're not getting that coffee stain effect. We are definitely transmuting the whiter tone of the weathered wood into now a more tan color. We're gonna go pretty aggressive here. We're gonna push in every nook, every cranny. We're gonna let it get inside of all the holes on this contagion lord. Here we go. Lots of fun details on the legs. There's a little nurgling down there. We're gonna have to paint him a different color later. Feeling it. But you see how our wash is not super aggressive. It's because we cut it with a little acrylic medium. Like I said, Army Painter actually makes a product called Quick Shade Mixing Medium, which does essentially the same thing. I ran out, so I just went with a good old acrylic medium. Art supply store. Feeling it. Getting some good transitions here. You see it's locking in those borders digging it you can let this wash totally dry and then you can come back in and spot wash any areas you feel like need to be darkened pretty easily multiple passes too easy let's take a look at how good these hands look look how fast we're just gonna lay it down super quick and you can see we get all this definition out of it that's what i love about the death guard you can paint them white but they're not really ever white the way i like to paint them you're just kind of like hinting that the armor maybe at one point in its career was white which is kind of to me, that's nervous as fuck. Okay, now let's take that weathered wood, put it on our detail brush, and we're gonna st start the process of painstakingly edge highlighting and tracing some of these outlines with some thin down weathered wood, a little bit of water, a little bit of patience here. We're tracing the contours of the foot, creating definition in those jagged tears in the armor hitting the trim underneath the foot. It's so funny the foot is such a focal point, but it is. We're gonna even uh, do the under highlight on some of the holes in armor, which is simply tracing the under rim of the circle and not the top. So that's where the light would be caught. It helps reinforce the three-dimensional qualities when you can accentuate the highlight. It's simple. You can even do it with a 2D surface and make it look 3D. We've done that many times. So there we go. Just Find all the panels, find everything that needs to be accentuated. Flip the model upside down if you have to, trace along the ridges here. Very thin, light brush work, low pressure. Do your best. 
Keep the paint thin when appropriate. Thick when it needs to be thick. And you can always come back on with a little wash, guys, a little pin wash. And you can always fix any mistakes you make here. So don't you don't have to be too worried. Cutting a little bit of angles in on the knee right here, letting it catch the light. Even though these lines are a little fat, the paint is very thin, it's gonna mute down. Same thing right here. Catch these angles. These are all easy highlights, guys. Space Marines are super easy. They got all the flat angles that you can trace. We're just tracing. Looking its best. This is really helping us accentuate the, the off-white nature of Weathered Wood, one of my favorite colors from Secret Weapon Miniatures. It is super important though, guys, to find the flat angle that allows you to drag the bristles of the brush across it so you're not actually having to try to draw a line. That's what I mean by tracing. Looking pretty good so far. It's getting a lot of definition. Sneak in there, get the other side of this grief from this weird angle. There it is. This one you are not able to trace, so you are going to have to raw dog paint that line in, which sucks. Same deal, we got these cracks over here. We're going to hit the edges of this broken, shattered part of his leg. Make it look its best, make it look shining, gleaming. Same deal, he's got another knee over here. We're going to just trace the top ridge, give yourself a sweet highlight, doing its best. Feeling it. This is actually a color scheme I used to use way back in the day, guys. I used to use bubonic brown from GW. And I'd mix together all sorts of like bleach bones and stuff. And that's how I would paint my Death Guard armies back in third and fifth edition. Fourth edition too, I guess. I love Nurgle. I love Death Guard. It's always been a part of my chaos love for a long time. So it's really fun to resurrect an ancient color scheme from the old playbook. Next level painting. Boom, there he is, looking his best. You can see we're gonna paint all this trim in. We're gonna paint that gut, all these things, guys. Definitely check us out on Twitch. We're gonna be keeping it icy and live. Play on, players.